about to put this video up onto YouTube and I thought I'd give you a little rundown of what's included. So, sorry, the dog is very distracting. Stop it. Uh, things I chat about here that are crafty are um, a purchase I made from Brooklyn Tweed. Uh, lots of natural dyeing, including uh, a sewing make I've made out of natural dyed raw silk that I got from Dharma Trading Company. Um, let's see, what else do I talk about? Oh, I'm going to do, I'll talk about the Jacob giveaway just in just a minute. Um, I talk about my Hilda cardigan, which is hand spun. I show you a goat fleece that has come into my possession and I have questions. I have questions about that goat fleece and a lot of doubts. Uh, I have some footage of Great Falls, Virginia, which is where the Potomac um, runs into the District of Columbia, right between Maryland and Virginia. Um, it's a beautiful area um, where it's still wild. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I show you some footage of um, a meadow walk I've been doing quite a lot because the meadow is spectacular right now. Um, and I'm on the lookout for some fireweed and I'm not finding it anywhere. I show you a new shawl cast on. Um, I have some footage of me spinning and just chatting. Spinning Gotland, actually. Um, I have, uh, let's see what else. For sewing, I also have this make. And I have to say that I've already started on another one of these dresses. Um, I briefly show you some silk scrunchies I made um, and really <laughs> what I share about them isn't very helpful other than the fact that I've made them. Um, and I share some a lipstick recommendation with you all. As well as, oh goodness, what else? Is that all? There was so much in this episode. It went on probably much longer than it needed to. But let me just, oh, and I also share um, a sweater that I don't think you all have seen it all yet, but it's the Ralph sweater from this book. And I'll, from this one, Vintage Shetland Project um, by Susan Crawford. So I will show you that in just a moment, but let's do the, the Jacob and Merino fleece giveaway. It's actually not fleece, they're bats. Um, I chose a comment off of the last YouTube video and the winner was Don Colbert, Colbert. Don, congratulations, you won that place. So get in touch with me. You know what? Comment on this YouTube video saying that you heard that you won and then also include in your comment either your Instagram handle or your Ravelry name and then so I know who you are on those platforms and then contact me on one of those. Just so it's all, you know, it's really you. So um, yeah, that's the agenda for this, um, for this kind of overly long vlog ramble. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it gives me a thrill and the warm fuzzies when you comment, when you like. But I just love to hear from you and I value your um, presence here and your communication. And I wanna know what you are making right now. Uh, I'm starting to feel the mojo amp up as far as woolly pursuits. So I would love to know what's inspiring you. Um, yeah, and I think I need to share more about what's inspiring me. I have some new podcasts and um, shows I've been watching. So maybe in the next episode, I will share more of those. And I've taken into account a lot of the comments that I got on the last episode as far as things that you all enjoy hearing about. So that's all in here. It's in this vault. And um, I will try to include uh, a lot of those um, ideas. All right, so Dawn, you are the winner. Contact me and I hope you enjoy this episode.
sweater I have cast on and been working on a lot recently is the Ralph sweater and it's this one from the Vintage Shetland Project. It's a unisex sweater and the adorable Ella Gordon is wearing it. She models it as well and I think that dude and Ella are wearing the same size. Yeah, here she is. This is the size I actually decided to cast on. And I kind of wish I had gone up a size because I just loving the oversized vibe. So this is um, knit out of, let's see, let me show you the yarns back here. Jameson and Smith. This is all two ply jumper weight. Um, this color, this color, the just one of the whites as well. And then the only Jameson spindrift I have is this one. So I'm knitting the fifth size and here it is. Kind of in love. This particular, um, motif is always the same and it separates these other motifs that have this kind of oh gosh I don't even know what kind of color you, what is that color what is that color it's a brownie mustardy beigey I don't even know what that is uh so each of these motifs that have that color in it are different this one is always the same it does have a corrugated rib which is not always my favorite but because of these natural colors I'll take it I like it. I did, I did a, um, what's this called? A tubular cast on. And I did the one where you knit it flat and then for four rows and then you join it around or you work it flat rather. <laughs> so it's looking great. I think this is a US four needle and I'll probably do the sleeves on a US five. Um, that seems to be the needles that work for me with this, the Shetland two ply yarns, fours and fives. So let's see, where am I on the chart? I'm about halfway up the body. It's a lot of work, but I'm really enjoying it and I cannot wait for the finished thing. So it is a pullover. It has steaks for the armholes and the neck. So, um, it's always fun to make a steak or three in this case. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at my yarn and thinking I need another sweater on the needles, one that is simpler. But honestly, I'm worried about my sock drawer because I'm not the best about darning socks. Don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy wearing the darned socks. And so I need more socks. But I don't really want to knit them either. Maybe a Zauber ball will um, snap me out of this anti sock mood. Good morning. Can I show you something that I purchased recently? Yeah. You want to come up here? So, my Wooly Thistle knitting group let me know about a sale that Brooklyn Tweed was having. Sorry, I'm gonna show you this. Somebody's feeling perky. Hey Al, hey baby. So, yes, Brooklyn Tweed has an annual sale, but usually it's brick and mortar, it's their warehouse sale. And it happened sometime mid to late August. And my Wooly Thistle Knitting Group told me about it. Some of the members there were saying, have you seen this? And I don't, I didn't see it. I don't think I get emails from them. So I was, I was ready with my buying finger as soon as it started that sale. And I was able to purchase something amazing. And it's here in my... I was able to purchase something amazing. I'm showing now, showing it to you now because I'm about to break into this and do some natural dyeing. And that's why 
my friends in our knitting group thought of me is because of that. So this was the only thing I was able to get from the sale, but it was full of kind of spinning experiments that they had. Hi, baby. <laughs> spinning experiment. No, don't. You want to hold my hand? Okay, we'll hold hands. She just wants to be pet. So, yeah. So, anyway, this is a cone of Forbes 02, which is a three-ply, woolen spun, worsted weight, Montana Rambouillet. And this is five pounds. It's about 5,000 yards. This is my head and this is, this is my dog. <laughs> Stop. I'm showing things. So I am going to skein some of this off. I'm going to dye with Cosmos and I'm going to dye with um, Crepe Myrtle. I'm going to skein off hat quantities. So this is like four sweaters worth ish. It's amazing. Probably more actually because it's such a heavier weight. So I got this for an absolute steal. I paid $60 ish. I know. I know. That is a deep, deep discount on this much wool and it's good wool and I'm very excited. I'm going to take my Nitty Naughty. Like I said, I'll probably skein off about 120 yards. Hi, baby. All right, I'm gonna put this baby down and I'm gonna grab this baby because she clearly needs some attention. Hey, 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 kiddo. She just wants pets. She's like, I need my morning cuddles. Hey, good dog. She keeps going over by her, by her leash and sniffing it, looking at me like, shall we go? Shall we go? So I wanted to show you that before I start doing some dyeing. Hope you have a wonderful day. Back at the natural dyeing with the Forbes 02. So it's Mordenting over there and I've got some crepe myrtle and some orange cosmos. This one's, this dye is ready to go. So I wanted to see the difference in color between the orange cosmos and my marigolds because often they seem very similar. And honestly, I bet this is going to do some sort of green, this um, crepe myrtle. Um, so let's, uh, let's see what happens. I love to see what happens. Here is the cosmos dye bath with the ranch. O2. It is quite orange. I don't know how it looks on camera, but it's an orange. Uh, and then look over here, we have the crepe myrtle, which is a kind of tanny green. Again, the camera does not do a great job capturing these, these pictures, but there's that one. Could not strain out all the flowers, but that's all right. They've turned purple as they've cooked. And now I'm starting just a wee marigold dye bath. Um, so I'm using 50 gram skeins of the wool, which is mordanted now, and I've put in um, half the weight, so 25 grams of the dye stuffs. So there'll be some marigolds, and they've all been fresh, although some of these marigolds are sort of half dried. Um, so after these three, I still have three other skeins to cook, and we'll have to see what I'm gonna do with those. Hello everybody, Alice and I would like to show you the rainbow of wool we have been dyeing with my gigantic Brooklyn Tweed comb. Alright, here's the first one. Alright, so this is Matter. <laughs> this is, and this is looking orange. Let me see if I can, I guess this is a bit closer to the actual color, but it's much pinker in real life. Maybe if I put it on a white towel. Right. Well, this is matter left over from my harvest last year, and these roots just keep going. They keep going. Maybe if I hold it up here, 
So this is pink. Let me put the actual orange next to it. Oh my gosh, that looks yellow. Oh my gosh, this is actually like creamsicle in real life. Crazy how this shows up on the camera. But now this does look pinker, doesn't it? Okay, so this is with my orange Cosmos and it is just like a creamsicle. Matter. And I've dyed at least a pound of fiber with these roots already and I just dry them out every time and re- I was like, why not reuse them? It's probably been more than a pound and they just keep going. So Matter, this is all on an alum mordant. Orange Cosmos. Marig, holy smokes. That looks neon. It is a bit neon, I won't lie. Marigold, just marigold. So I have a beginning of a rainbow. And then I have crepe myrtle. This is a pink crepe myrtle. It really kind of is a beigey green. Tempted to over dye it, but you know, you need neutrals as well when you are putting knit projects together. Then I have this, which is marigold over dyed with Saxon blue indigo. And I have a, just a plain Saxon blue next goodness you really can't tell but this has a yellow base it's a greener it's a little bit more variegated it's a greener blue this is actually deeper than this but again the camera is having a hard time capturing it maybe it's the tablecloth I don't know and then finally um, I had some lots of woad seeds from my plant this was its final year gave me a lot of seeds and I had read in the wild no what's it called wild color by Jenny Dean that woad seeds on an alum, no, just by themselves, will do a pink, but they did not do a pink. It was something akin to this. So I took that wool and I put a little cochineal that was left over in the cap of my dye grinder and it made a really pretty pink, but then I was like, oh, I already have a pink. So I put some logwood on top of that pink and I have this gorgeous lavender lilac color. So there's my rainbow so far. This has all sorts of possibilities. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven times 50. So that's, you know, what is that? 350 grams of wool, worsted weight. So it's been a pleasure to share my rainbow with you and I'll catch you soon. Knitting a few rows on my Hilda sweater. I'm actually knitting the second sleeve. Oh, I did all the repairs on this and I cut it open. So I ended up dropping down and turning pearls into knits. It was really no big deal. And I just used a double-ended crochet hook, those little pick up a stitch things. So yeah, I then I went in and I put an I-cord, applied I-cord edge all the way around. Here's the collar. I really love this collar. It's a one by one rib where you pick up uh, a stitch along the neckline and it makes a really lovely edge. It's not looking so lovely on my camera, but there it is. Really, really, really pretty. Is that a drop stitch? That better not be a dropped stitch. No. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so it's a stretchy one by one rib that can also fold over like this. Let me just try this on. Okay, that's never gonna get in there, but there is the first arm in. There is the collar standing up. So one thing I did incorrectly on this sweater was too many increases before separating for the arms, and it is what it is, but it makes for a big, um, a lot of room in the underarm, which you do get a little fold there, but I do want this to be a jacket, so I will be wearing layers. So I'm just, it is what it is. It's just a lovely cardigan no matter what, and it doesn't have to look perfect. Look at that collar. Yes. So here's the idea. The collar is kind of like this. I'm going to put a button right here. There we go. Um, or you can flip it down so it's got a nice little lapel and I did some fancy treatment on the inside yes I did 
So right here you can see this is where I had to drop down and there had been, um, this is actually where I had fixed a cable ages ago, but didn't realize that the helical knitting method would impact that spot. But it's okay, it's all stabilized. It's just got a little doobly-doo lump right there. So yeah, there's a little too much fabric here and there's a little too much fabric here. But this is a homely hug from Hilda. Homely hug from Hilda, that might be the name of the sweater. So I did, I hand stitched in the Katie Green Bean sheep ribbon. There's the Jacob. I don't know if you can see the blanket stitching there. Let me, can you see the blanket stitching? It's in white, white silk thread. So this is my homely hug from Hilda. I just need to work on that one sleeve and probably redo this cuff in a different cable. And I will have my homely hug from Hilda jacket. Hi, lovely fiber townies. I was given a goat fleece by a friend who got it from a friend who has goats, but couldn't even tell me what kind of goat it was. So I just said, I'll, I'll take a look. I've never dealt with a goat fleece. It's just a wad of threads from the dress that I just finished and I threw it there because I think this goat fleece is going in the compost. If you take a look, it has zero crimp. It's incredibly long stapled. I don't know, anyone know what kind of goat fleece this is? I combed a little of it and spun it a wee bit and just even overnight, it was incredibly difficult to spin and I think it's only good for maybe rope and maybe not even that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not pulling apart, but I think it, it wouldn't stand up to too much pressure. Maybe not like hemp in a rope. So any ideas about what this is, any ideas of a use for it could be used for stuffing, but honestly, I gave it many washes and power scour with lots of power scour and it's still pretty goaty smelling. So if you have any thoughts about this blonde wig of a goat fleece I was given, let me know. There's some bone set, really. This is a good medicinal, but they're starting to find that it may stress the liver out too much. The jury's still out. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm looking for fireweed. Um, I haven't seen any this year. But it's, <clears throat> this is ironweed, pretty sure. Not fireweed. Hmm. I have a new cast on to share with you, uh, just really quickly. It's being knit out of my Matter Dyed Corydale from Serenity Farms. This is a worsted weight. It's this beautiful pale pink. It's really hard to capture. It's I dyed it with Matter from my garden in the spring, I think. And it's just, I didn't know what to do with it. I have three skeins. So I cast on... The Dotted Rays by Dr. Stephen West. And I feel like, you know, there are those um, complex Japanese words for different vibes or sensations. And I feel like there should be one in English, at least, for that thing that happens when you cast on a shawl. And in the beginning, there are just a few stitches and it grows really quickly and you just knit a huge chunk. And then the next time you pick it up, you're like, 
but it's not as fun anymore. I feel like that's a thing. That is a thing we need to define in one word. So submit your, your proposals here for one word that encapsulates that, that vibe. So it's super squishy. I still look at that. I started it out on US eights and then I decided, nah, we're going up to US tens. And honestly, I think I could keep going up. Um, so I need to, the drape is definitely better now that I'm on US tens, but I may even go up to a larger needle. We'll see. Yeah, so I'm in that second phase now of shawl knitting. I've passed the honeymoon stage and, but I really love knitting with Carrie's yarn. And this is the second thing I've knit out of um, Serenity Farm, Corydale. The, um, just recently I finished a cardigan out of some hand spun from her sheep, from one of her sheep. a fold line blog. Let's watch it and spin Gotland. Ooh, the fold line. Let me change the speed of it. I love the fold line. I'm going to pause her though and tell you what's going on here. I'm spinning. It's 46 degrees, 730 in the morning. I'm trying out these Icelandic eye patches that were recommended by some friends of mine. So I'm just having fun here. They're very cooling. It's a little morning meditation with my spinny spin. Doing some self-care. Drinking some kofifi. How are y'all doing? Somebody had mentioned that they missed my spinning. Maybe not seeing me spin, but actually spinning and talking about it on my vlogs. Ugh, this was a Gotland fleece I bought several years ago at Maryland Sheep and Wool. It was raised by a teenager, teenage shepherdess in Maryland. It was an expensive and beautiful fleece and I combed it um, and I tried to spin it. I don't know, it just wasn't going well. Um, and I still have a lot of the combed nests that I made, but I took the rest of the fleece and I wove a little rug out of the locks. And I thought I'd give it another go, you know? You can always come back to things and try again after they've marinated, even if it's been several years of marination. So that's what I'm doing. I've put the largest whorl on my ladybug. It's not the bulky whorl but it's a slow I'm trying to do this slowly and not put too much twist in it it's a worsted preparation i.e. it is combed but you can see that I am letting plenty of twist into the drafting zone <sighs> so it would be great to get a nice usable yarn you know these long wools don't have um, elasticity to the degree that sh shorter stapled wools do, but um, I really do enjoy the drape and the shine and the color of this wool. So I'm just experimenting with stop the spin. Got this right here. Change the. I'm just experimenting with. Um, letting some more air into the wool and just sort of taking it slowly. Um, I cannot make myself be a technical spinner. It's one of those things where I have to do it by feel. And that means that things don't turn out consistently. And that means that I can't often can't replicate <laughs> um, things I've done previously. And I'm, I'm just, I'm okay with that. I think it feels wrong to me to to me personally not for other people to do but it's just not how I want to approach spinning it doesn't it doesn't feel good it is not a thinking thing it's a feeling thing so I feel like 
like spinning is one of the only things, sort of activities of daily living that I instantly felt a, like a connection in my, into my ancestors, in my DNA. And it did not take me long to learn. It's like I knew it. It's like I'd always known how to do it. Sorry, that was a big ruler that fell on the floor. So that's how I approach it. And I spin in the manner that makes my ancestors happy. I want to go in the direction of the growth of the hair, the wool. So this was the cut end. So I combed out the locks. The tip end would be down here. So like petting a dog or a cat, I want to go with the nap, not against it. Um, so I'll start with this end and let him join in here. Just kind of overlap. Slubs are fine. I might pull some out as I come to them. So I'll probably spin this little nest onto the bobbin and then um, take these off. They're very soothing and cooling. It's a Saturday morning here. Did I say it's 46 degrees? I am thrilled. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then go for a walk and then enjoy the Saturday crafter day. Much love to all of you. lovely folks. I want to show you a new pattern I am going to try today. I was inspired by Heather Liu from Closet Core Patterns. I saw this dress on her Instagram stories. Uh, I'm lurking a lot on, well, I'm not lurking a lot on Instagram these days. I'm not on Instagram very much, but when I am, I'm lurking. I haven't posted there in months and um, I'm not sure when I will again. Maybe, maybe not. Um, okay, so she had made this dress by, oh gosh, Birgit Helmerson. I will put the name right here in so you have the spelling correctly. Um, oh, actually, there it is, Birgitta Helmerson. This is the Gather Dress Zero Waste Pattern. And I have this three yards and eight inches of rayon poplin in my stash. And it's pretty sheer. Well, it's not super sheer, but it's not opaque. Um, it's an interesting fabric. So I, it's got really pretty drape. It's got birds on the wire. I was just very drawn to this. Um, typically don't buy rayons, but um, this was one that I had bought to get free shipping. Um, not, in, not expensive. Uh, so let's see, I got, there are two size ranges. This is size one, which goes up to these sizes. I think it's about a 46 inch bust, but there's an incredible amount of ease in this pattern. And the way it's laid out is that you use exactly three yards of fabric. And it has to be, I believe, 54 or 57 inches wide. Although, you know, I'm seeing the possibilities of working something similar, maybe with less ease in an even, uh, narrower fabric, I think it's doable, but you wouldn't get the volume of floatiness that you get here. Um, she recommends a lightweight linen, which I don't have enough yardage of, so I'm going to see if this works using this fabric. So I've just cut the last piece. Um, it's tricky to cut this kind of floaty fabric, and if this pattern turns out well, this is the cutting grid. I'm not showing you the measurements. Um, so if it works well, I will cut out these pieces in like um, a brown paper so that I can just put them onto the fabric. But as it is, she gives you measurements. And so I, 
If you do it right, you use every last inch of the fabric, including the bits that you cut out for the V here and for the back neck yoke. You use those as facings. Um, yeah, yeah, even these facings here are cut out of the fabric. It's pretty ingenious. Um, so yes, so this is the last piece that I've cut out. I still have to cut this further into the sleeves and pockets. But I had three yards and eight inches, and this is what I have left over. So if I had had exactly three yards, of course, you kind of have to allow for shrinkage. Um, and linen can do that, right? After you after you wash and dry it, it could shrink. So I would maybe buy three and a quarter yards. Um, but this is what I have left. So really an interesting pattern. I will, I will keep you apprised of how it all turns out. Got the other pieces over there on the back of my couch. And we'll see how much I get done today. It's Saturday morning at about 10.30. Just making my zero waste dress and I've already screwed up. So this is the way the sleeve was supposed to be sewn and I sewed it the other way. So it wouldn't even fit in my arm in it. So I've unpicked a ton of serging and a hem as well and I'm getting ready to finish the second one. So it's on my little arm press. I'm about to press up this hem. And then maybe I'll get it into the bodice, which is here. I've taken a risk and done some black serging. I don't have white thread to put in that serger. Um, maybe that's something I need to remedy. But you know what? There's already black. There, there's where the, the serging is. I'm going to live with it for now. Didn't want to do French seams because, again, I'm not sure if this is all going to work out. So I don't want to take the time to do French seams. But that's an option for sure. What is wrong with me? Have you noticed what I've done here? This is the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side. Look what I did. Why, 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 why? I'm gonna unpick for the second time today a damned serger seam. I would like to show you a few things I've made recently. Um, I've made some scrunchies out of silk, leftover silk. These are some of the silk scarves I've dyed, as well as things I've cut up and used in sewing projects. So I found the a couple tutorials online and my goodness, some of them are quite unsatisfactory in the construction. I really wanted a scrunchie that um, actually I'm wearing one in my hair right now. I will show you in a minute. This is silk dyed with cochineal and the first one I believe had you hand sew the two short ends together, which is just, no, 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 no. Then I found another one, um, that had you do like leave part of the stitching on the long edge of the silk open so that you could turn it right side out through there. But then the way they put the elastic in wasn't great. So what I did was I didn't put the elastic in until it was turned right side out. On my last video, I, I asked for Fiber Town viewers to leave comments that included something they'd like to see me do. I'm looking to shake things up a little bit. And one person, at least one person, was talking about makeup recommendations. So I thought, let's make this a thing. Um, I will share a product with you when I find something that I really like. And I just put some makeup on. And this eye look is from um, Woma Beauty, which is a black owned um, cosmetics company. They have amazing stuff. That's the eyeshadow palette. I think this is the Savage palette, I believe. Um, but this is the thing I'd like to put on today. So this is from Ilia. I think I got this on sale because it was pricey. So this is a tinted lip oil and this is the color Saint. So let me show you. I'm going to be like a beauty YouTuber. Look at that doe foot applicator. <laughs> this is the Savage palette, I believe. 
Um, but this is the thing I'd like to put on today. So this is from Ilya. I think I got this on sale because it was pricey. So this is a tinted lip oil and this is the color Saint. So let me show you. All right. So, uh, I like, it's just easy. You don't have to really spend a long time fussing with it, but it's like a lip gloss, but it's very hydrating. So there it is. You know, there's no put something on before and really watch how you apply it. I really enjoy this. It lasts for quite a while and it feels really, really good. Um, not sticky at all. Um, just really good stuff. They sent me a sample of another color with, um, it's like a, a smaller one and frankly I, I wish more cosmetics companies would send would would produce things in smaller quantities because I almost never end up using the entire thing maybe that'll change now that I wear makeup more frequently I'm gonna put in one of my silk scrunchies here uh, but this is great stuff again it's pricey it's not drugstore makeup, but I really, really enjoy it. Um, so that was the Ilia Tinted Lip Oil. And I will also say that I struggle these days with um, with lipstick application because as I'm aging, the uh, vermilion, which is the red in your lips, your natural color, like the line of where it is, it started to sort of blur. Like, I don't know if you are above a certain age. Have you noticed this where like there used to be a very defined line of where the vermilion, the vermilion of your lips were. And now it's kind of all kind of mushing into your chin or your, or your upper lip. Let me know. I want to show you how my new dress moves. This is the Zero Waste Gather Dress by Birgitta Helmerson, and I am loving wearing it around the house. It's on this birds on a wire fabric, and I want to show you how it twirls, just so you can share in the delightful volume. I love it. It has pockets, like all good dresses should. I want more eventually. Hope you enjoyed the twirl.